what city are you in right now? Los Angeles. All right. And I'm from Pittsburgh, too, so uh, I always thought it was cool whenever I'd see you wearing a Steelers hat or Steelers shirt, you know, and all that way back. You know? I, well, I was born in, in Butler, Pennsylvania, yeah. just just outside of Pittsburgh, and was I was I was black and gold. In fact, I'm still part of the black and gold brigade. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm one of the members of the, the Steelers fan club and the Pirates, and, of course, our Penguins are, are doing damn pretty damn good this year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, a coworker of mine. He went. To, he uh, went to Altoona. We both went to Penn State. But uh, he's a hardcore Steelers, Pirates, Penguins fan. And in fact, during Steelers se- or football season, he doesn't shave whenever the Steelers are on a win streak. So he can't. It's a curse. He's like me. I don't know what it is. If you're from Pittsburgh, I curse. There's certain things that I do. If I do something at the beginning of the season and they're doing well, I don't change it. And if if and sometimes I can't watch the first quarter of a Steeler game, which kills me. If they come out strong, mm-hmm. like if I hear they're doing, like sometimes I'll not. Like if I start the season and I miss the first few minutes of a game and they're doing real well, I, I don't. I try not to change it. Now last year I don't know what I did wrong, but the year before I did pretty good. <laughs> yeah, and Andy had a beard. Uh, he looked like Dusty Hill or something from ZZ Top. I mean, exactly. but it was cool. But pleasure speaking to you. I spoke to Bobby about an hour or so ago about the new album, and then I saw you guys last year on tour at Hi-Fi, and that was a great show. Whenever oh. you guys were with Cinderella. Yeah. Thank you. All right, ready? Yeah, I'm ready to go. All right, tell us about Poisoned. Um, it looks, I've looked at the songs that you've got here on the list. Some of these are really cool cover songs. Some of them aren't as obvious when it comes, to, for example, the Stones' "Dead Flowers" is a relatively deep cut. Um, looks like a cool list here. What made you guys think let's do a covers album? Here, here was the first thing I want to say. Um, if you ask me, my my ongoing argument with the band, uh, it, and we all, and, and this is four original members for twenty one years now, right? Is I'm always pushing for our band to do original material all the time. I do that in my solo work. I do it when I score movies. And finally, this year, uh, oddly enough, last year, Bobby Dahl and myself uh, got into a uh, an actual pretty knockdown drag out fight at High Five Buys in Atlanta. Yeah, we remember. <laughs> yes, and it was weird because we had argued, which what is cool about it is that we argued about, you know, what songs to play or not play in the set, which is actually after this many years, it's amazing that the four of us are still that passionate about what we do. If that, you know, a lot of bands are just like, ah, put in whatever and let's go off the stage. We actually really care about what we're putting in the set, right? Mm-hmm. And when when we had this confrontation on stage, it was the strangest thing, because it, what was weird is here we are knowing each other for many, many years, and fighting like this, and then continuing to finish out the song, right? And then going back to one of our ongoing things is this year, I wanted to go in and write original stuff, and the band just felt... Uh, that at least Bobby, I know Bobby and CC felt this way. They thinking that maybe it could, you know, you go in there and start writing original material can cause another conflict, right? So maybe just picking out some fun cover songs was the best thing to do, and it actually turned out to be a lot of fun making the record, especially with Don was. You know, when you go in with a guy like Don, who's worked with the Stones and Garth Brooks and Dylan and Bonnie Raitt, that's a pretty awesome feeling. And for me, one of the most amazing things about going in and making this stuff is that not every track was was a, 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 a top hit, like Dead Flowers, for example, by the Stones. Um, oddly enough, was one of those songs that was, was a real deep cut on a Stones record on Sticky Fingers, and it was one of those situations where I just felt good that we were doing songs like Dead Flowers, we were doing some of the stuff that's not really well known, but I also came in and I brought in uh, stuff like the car is just what I needed, where I really turned the song around. Um, I, I think it was Bobby and myself that thought Sexy Back by Justin Timberlake would be a great cut, uh, and we really poisoned the song. And, and henceforth, you got the name Poisoned. We took all of these songs and did our own thing to it. Okay, cool. So it is still, uh, it, well, to use, for example, talk about the Stones, whenever you played Sticky Fingers, you know, you've got your straightforward rockers like Brown Sugar, you've got country sounds like uh, uh, Dead Flowers, you got to move bluesy but it's still the Stones. And I think that's one thing about Poison. You guys can do ballads, you can do three-chord rockers, you can do country-ish tinge songs, 
But when it's all said and done, you still know the root of that is still poison. Absolutely. And and the one thing that I want to say, no matter what what our band, no matter what our band has done throughout the years, we took songs like Your Mama Don't Dance, and and that was played on an old Rhodes piano, right? An old Fender Rhodes, I believe. And it was a song we used to cover in the bars, and we totally poisoned the song and rocked the song up. And we did that with a bunch of songs uh, throughout the years. And then when we did this record, I, we even took a song. It's kind of a again, not really a big, huge single for the Who. We did a song, Squeeze Box, uh, and completely changed it by doing drop D tuning and, and just turning the song around. And that's the one thing that the four of us bring to anything that we do, no matter what it is, is we add an element of who and what we are into the playing. And each of us allows the other guy to do what he wants to do on that song, and that's what makes it cool. And uh, you guys are going to be touring this summer. Obviously, it's still um, still a lot of fun for you guys. Yeah, I love uh, of all the things when I when I was a kid, I never knew when I was putting on my Kiss records or Alice Cooper or Zeppelin. I didn't even know you needed to make a record back then. I was like, man, I want to write songs, but all I dreamed about was being on stage and blowing stuff up and having fun, right? And and I was like, this is I drew in my class. I used to have every notebook with what the stage would look like, you know, where the drum riser would be, what this would be doing the py- I'd even make the pyro blowing up right and and that that's has not as I'm sitting here talking to you right now I'm at the management office and I'm drawing out ideas for the stage for this summer and going through the ad mats and just all the stuff that still keeps me passionate about what I'm doing understandable I mean that's still what makes it fun I mean you know no matter what job you have if you have to oh man I gotta go to work you know keeping it fun whatever it is you do obviously makes you enjoy it more it, it will and for me I, I've said this for many years the minute I lose that passion in music I promised our fans that I would completely get out I said listen when I go on that stage and I have to fake my way uh, of going on stage and playing rock I said I will disappear before that happens I will gracefully bow out and say I've had a great run. Um, I don't feel it in my heart no more. And I I don't think I can ever feel that way. But if it ever happens, I would bow out before I went through the motions. Because I I have seen this, and I will go on the record saying, I've seen a few bands that should have gracefully bowed out a few years ago. I know what you mean, definitely. Um, anything else we can go over? Anything else you'd like to add? I just wanted to add in this uh, couple, uh, two things. Um, one, again, um, the Poisons tour this summer and the new record, Poisoned. Uh, that's the name of the tour. It's the Poison World Tour. And uh, looking forward to being out on the road and playing some of the great new tunes as, along with the greatest hits. And then I just wanted to add one last thing. I'm getting ready to shoot a huge show for VH1. It's just simply called Rock of Love with Brett Michaels, and it airs July 15th, and it will be a humongously cool rock show, and basically with this show is sort of VH1's way of saying rock is back. All right. Well, it was a pleasure speaking to you. You too. And hopefully we'll see you this summer in Atlanta. You got it. And when I get closer to the show, too, I know we have a date at High Five Buys. Oh, cool. I get closer to the Rock of Love show on VH1, uh, it'd be great if you pumped that out there now, but then we'll do something really cool for that because it's going to be a huge show. You know how to get a hold of me. So, yeah, we'll do that then, too. And I'll see you at the show. All right. You take care.